Ashe, Ashe, I'm going rising once again to you all, my very beautiful people, my highly enriched melanin people, you, the Earth's original organic humans, aka my fellow Africans. Yes, it is I, the mystic philosopher, and yes, it is evident that I'm still here with you on this side of reality for another time, and welcome back. To the Mystic Peace talking again on the 15 minutes with I, the Mystic Philosopher. And this is episode 35. And the topic is still stress on the mind, or more correctly, the impact that this thing that we humans call stress is having on this thing that we also call mind. And at the end of my last episode, episode 34, and as customary, I ask that you uh, please join me. If or when next I am talking again, possibly in this episode 35, where and when I will be talking more about uh, sheep and the disease called want as I continue to share my perspectives on this quote from the Adamic race history and holy book. And I quote, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And that is Psalm 23 and verse 1. And which I also emphasize that I am only using it, this quote, as a reference just to make and prove my points. So you should please stay tuned. And I always took the opportunity to remind you of the want equation. Want equal money, which is equal to stress, which is equal to unhappiness. Coupled with the fact that I shall not want. You shall not want, and nor should you be found wanting. And from that quote, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I have already dealt with and explained and also shared with you some of my perspectives on the words Lord, the Lord, herd, sheep, and the word shepherd. And I also ask you then, and I'm asking you once again, are any of you, my listeners and watchers, a sheep? Do you call yourselves sheep? Are all of you, my listeners and watchers, someone's sheep? Are you proud of being called sheep? And just like the word black, have you ever seriously think about or thought about what you are actually saying and what you are actually doing if or when you are calling yourselves uh, a sheep? And if or when you are allowing others to call, label, and name you sheep? And as you may someday, may someday discover, if you are a sheep, you may someday discover that it, does not, that it does not really matter if you are a religious sheep. Example, if you are a, a, a bald head sheep, a Rasta sheep, a Christian sheep, a Muslim sheep, a Jewish sheep, an Israelite sheep, a political sheep, a whatever sheep. And it does not matter who or what is your shepherd. The fact is that if you are knowingly and intentionally calling yourself a sheep and willfully allowing others to call you a sheep, then you are a sheep. And from my perspective, a sheep is a sheep, is a sheep, is a sheep, is a sheep. I couldn't make a song out of that. And of course, I am sure by now you knew that what that with I the mystic philosopher, there are much more thought-provoking questions, answers, and perspectives where those originally came from. And some of the thought-provoking questions that I would now like to ask and explore. And if possible, get some of the most uh, reasonable, honest, straightforward answers for are these. And I quote, number one, as it pertains to sheep, and in all fairness, is a shepherd really and truly a good person? Or more correctly, a good human. Or can a shepherd be really and truly seen as a good human, a good person? Two, can a shepherd really and truly be called a good person or a good human? And to answer that question, we will have to revisit some of the questions that I have also, um, that I have also asked in previous episodes, such as, what does a shepherd do? And why does a shepherd do what he or she does? In other words, what is or what are his or her motives for doing what he or she does? So, 
In this episode, which is episode 35, we are going to find some answers to these questions. Now, Psalm 23, again, I quote, the Lord is my shepherd. Unquote. The two simple but very relevant questions that we may want to ask and have answered first are, and I quote, one, who is a shepherd? Two, and whose best interest does he or she has in mind? Well, as you all already know, from all that I have discussed in previous episodes, a shepherd is a person, usually a man, who tends sheep in pastures or on farms. And for your information, just some trivial information here, a woman that tends sheep, because we have to be equal opportunities here, right? A woman that tends sheep is, uh, or rather tends sheep in a pasture or on pastures or farms, is called a shepherdess. So in other words, a shepherd or a shepherdess is a farmer. He or she ensures that they, meaning his or her sheep, are well fed, well kept, and that they are well protected from all kinds of praise and from all forms of danger or dangers. On the other hand, sheep are also looked down on and are considered to be one of the most stupid, one of the most defenseless, most docile, and the most easily led animals on the planet Earth. And so too are the people that are considered to be sheep, a.k.a. sheep and livestock. And because of their docility, they are considered by some to be harmless, um, defenseless, helpless, prone to, to deception and totally incapable of thinking and taking care of themselves. And as such, they are easy pickings for anything, any other animal or anyone that will or that would prey upon them. They are easy pickings to them. They can be easily killed, maimed, stolen, led astray, and therefore they need a shepherd to be their thinker, to be their leader, to be their protector and their provider. That's a sheep. The word shepherd is also used in the fields of religion and politics to represent those who lead, those who rule, those who govern, those who control and lord over people. The sheep and the followers. The government, aka the mind controllers, are shepherds. Some sheep also consider some shepherd to be good shepherds and others to be, they consider to be bad shepherds. But here is another very interesting question that from idealistic philosopher. Why would a shepherd, good or bad, be interested in the sheep or in his sheep, aka be interested in his flock? From my perspective, it is because the sheep is, more is of more importance. The sheep is of more value. The sheep is of more worth to the shepherd than the shepherd is to the sheep. In other words, the sheep, in all practicality, serves the same purpose to the sheep's overt praise, a.k.a. the sheep's overt enemies, as it does for the shepherd. And the big loser in any and all cases is the helpless docile sheep. It's always the helpless docile sheep. The very sad thing is that the poor sheep, because of their gross ignorance and stupidity, believe that their shepherd and farmer is their true and dear friend. Hear the most about their friend, what a friend they have in their shepherd. That he, they believe that he or she is their defender, redeemer, protector, and even worse, they truly, they, they believe that their shepherd is, is their true savior without realizing that the motives are the same for both the perceived friends and foes alike. Upon careful observation and analysis, one might even conclude that the motives of the sheep's perceived and overt enemies are not as hidden, covert, and sinister as that of their so-called good shepherd. For example, the motives of the lion, the tiger, the, the, the fox, the wolves, etc. are not hidden. They are not covert and sinister. And sinister. To these animals, they will only kill. 
or hunt a sheep for food or for meal or for their hungry family, their young ones or for their young ones. And once they are filled or satisfied, once they're belly full, the rest of the sheep can live happily and in peace until when these animals become hungry again or when the needs arises. However, to the so-called good shepherd, the farmer, the sheep is used not only to provide milk, food, or meat and clothing for his family, but also to make feasts and for celebrations and for his friends to enjoy at the poor, ignorant sheep expense. The sheep is also given away by the good shepherd and farmers as gifts to other shepherds and farmers in bartering or trade deals. The sheep is also sold in the sheep's trade business, etc. The good shepherd and farmer will also rob the sheep of their wool for making for the making of clothes for their families and to keep themselves warm. The good shepherd, the good shepherd and farmers will take pleasure in sacrificing the life and blood of the docile sheep unto its Lord and God's. For his own sins, his own errors and fallacies, the good shepherd and farmer will use the sheep as collateral in order to make profitable deals and to become richer, wealthier, and powerful. The sheep can also be seen as nothing more than the slaves, the, the prisoners, and the property of the good old shepherd and farmers. And finally, on this point for now, if one sheep should become, uh, you know, should be by, this, by some stroke of luck, or miracle should one sheep become awakened and become aware and enlightened of the good shepherd's covert and sinister plan for it and tries to run away tries to escape the good shepherd would leave the entire flock either under the watchful eyes of his trained and vicious and merciless sheepdogs or have them fan for themselves have the sheep fan for themselves just to bring back that one poor sheep to the flock and then the good shepherd would teach it a lesson so that other others, other sheep would not dare to get some great idea, some idea to try and escape from him or from the fold. In fact, in most cases, the runaway sheep would be brought back and severely disciplined, severely punished in the presence of the remaining flock and sometimes even sacrificed, aka put to death in the presence of all of his brethren, his family, his friends, and his foes alike. So in the event you, my people, may find yourselves wanting a shepherd, good or bad, I would suggest that you think very carefully about it. For now you know, and, now, and for now you must have discovered, no one have discovered, that wanting is not a good thing. Again, Thus far today, I honestly think that I have, at the very least, honestly, I honestly think that I may have given some of you, if not all of you, a, a lot more to think about. Especially as it, as it relates to the words shepherd, sheep, intellect, and animals, and their related questions, etc. And so in the interest of time, I think that I should just pause here for today and ask that you please join me when next I'm talking again, possibly next is episode 36, where and when I will be t um, talking more about the same sheep. Yeah, about sheep. And the disease called want as I continue to share my perspectives on this quote from the Adamic race history and holy book. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Which I'm only using, as I said before, as a reference point as a reference to prove my points and please stay tuned for I shall not want, you shall not want and we shall not want and we shall not be found wanting. In the meantime and between time, please let me remind you, remember my people, that yesterday is history. It too is dead and gone, no more to come back and tomorrow is a mystery. It too may never come, but today is a gift, which is why we call it the present day. And so I hereby implore you to live for today. By live, I mean claim your natural birthright. And just in case you forget or you don't know what a natural birthright is, it is your happiness and full joy today and hope for tomorrow. For it may never come. And thanks for your time. Thanks for listening. I am the Mystic Philosopher. Under 15 with I, the Mystic Philosopher. Ashe, 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 Ayase.